Hello everyone, welcome to Gypsy Test Fridays episode 13, I believe. And today we're going to take a look at Django's amazing 1949 solo on minor swing. Before we get started though, I want to tell you about this Gypsy Jazz Camp Jam Festival on Crete in Greece from June 4th until June 7th. It's on a paradise campsite on a peninsula surrounded by blue water. There's cedar trees, there's good food, there's swimming, there's cheap accommodations. There's direct flights to Ghania, because that's the name of the place, from many European cities. It will be four days of jamming, workshops and some live gigs. I'll be teaching a violin and a guitar workshop, so sign up now if you're interested. There is a early bird discount until the end of March for 40 euros. The normal price is 50 euros. For more information, go to the link in the description. That's the link on Facebook. But you can also send a mail to gypsyjazz.camp.greece at gmail.com. Of course, there's links to all of these things in the description. Let's get started with the lesson. We're gonna do something completely different in this episode. Usually I take a great solo, I transcribe it and I show you five or six licks from that solo and then I'll walk you through it, I'll give my analysis and then I use them in an improvisation on a backing track. But in this episode, I just want to focus on learning this absolutely amazing Django solo. And the reason why is because I always stress that the two most important aspects to master is technique and timing. By learning this solo verbatim, we can focus on those aspects. So I might say something about the licks themselves and why they work harmonically, but that's not the focus. The focus is learning this solo note for note. And then I can show you some of the technical decisions I made with the fingerings and the picking and how I work on timing. In this episode, I'm gonna do the first two choruses and then the final two choruses I will do exclusively for my highest level patrons, my giant steppers. So if you want to learn the complete solo or want a tap for the complete solo, you can check out my Patreon. But if you want to learn the first two choruses now, this is the video for you. So I transcribed the complete solo and let's go through it lick by lick. It starts with this uh, pickup bar, three, four, one. It's nothing uh, difficult about that. But the next bar, is where the difficulty starts. So we have this A minor arpeggio descending and then this triplet. Now, to make it sound like Django, you have to have a downstroke on the tip triplet. Now, if you're a gypsy jazz speaker like me, that means you will have four downstrokes in a row, right? Up, down, down, down. So is that four? One, two, three, four, yeah. So how do you stay relaxed in a situation like that? Now there's a couple of tips I can give you. The first tip is to focus on the last downstroke and realize that that is a rest stroke. So on that B, we want a downstroke there so that we can play the triplet like down, hammer on, up. Otherwise we have to do two uh, a hammer on and a pull off or we have to do, I mean, you will lose some of the power of this uh, phrase. Focus on that last downstroke, then make all the other downstrokes very tiny movements, like you're almost not playing them. To practice it, you're almost not playing them. And now you start facing them in a little bit. Until you have it, and then this is the way to train your hand to stay relaxed because it is possible to do all downstrokes there and, and not get stuck between the strings as long as you keep your hand relaxed, which is the key to this uh, downstroke gypsy jazz picking style. So, now I like to play uh, the lick up like this. So I have this minor triad here in this shape. I, I even keep my fingers down. And then an E, a downstroke on the E again. So let me play this phrase so that you can hear the whole thing. Now, so we go up, down, so double downstroke. And I do that so that I can do again the speaking pattern on the triplet. This triplet. And then we have a D minor six, I pitch it down. 
Now, this is an excellent place to be aware of timing because it's very easy to rush that D minor triplet down, uh, that D minor arpeggio down because you have a jump. So people think oh, I have to jump and then they move too fast with their hands and it ruins the swing of the phrase. So just relax and keep the swing rhythm consistent. Ta di 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 di. Ta ga da di da da. Make sure that that last F is on the beat. So. So one more time the complete phrase and I'm gonna focus on a couple of things. So I'm gonna focus on that last downstroke of all those downstrokes, the B. I'm gonna focus on this shape here. And I'm gonna focus on not rushing this. And I'm gonna focus on keeping a consistent swing rhythm throughout. Ding, 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 ding. Three, four, ah. Uh. Now, normally I would practice it with a metronome. I would do all four beats, then one and three, two and four, only beat two, only beat four. So for demonstration purposes, let me play it with the metronome on two and four. Let's do it now on 160, so you can hear what it sounds like if you practice slowly. One, two, one, two, three, four, mm. Loop. What I like to do is when I practice a phrase like this to really emphasize the things I have to look out for. So the first thing would be this accent on the B and then this shape, really keep my fingers down and then not rush there. So let's see if we can exaggerate those things. One, two, three, four. And then uh, when I feel comfortable, you can play it on the backing track. I uploaded a backing track especially for this lesson. It's called uh, Minor String 1949 Django in Rome version because the funny thing is they take the easiest chords possible, right? They don't do the B flat at the end. It's really like A minor, D minor, E7. Only those three chords, no complicated turnarounds. Just it really swings. So that's the most important thing they were going for. So let me play this with the backing track. Okay, let's go to the next phrase. One, two, three, four, one. Three, four, one. There's a couple of the same principles uh, in this phrase. Uh, for instance, we have this downstroke thing. So I focus on the last A. So this is the third bar here. I want to slide there and a short E. So both those E should be short. Another thing is, again, we, want, we don't want to rush, especially this diminished arpeggio. Interesting that he chooses to play a major nine or yeah a major nine on top of this E7. Right? So it's kinda almost like he's playing B minor or B minor six. And then uh, he, he switches to flat nine. So it's really nice resolution going on there. You wouldn't normally play this major nine on a dominant chord in a minor tonality, but it sounds really great. Let's play both phrases in a row on the backing track. Now the backing track, you might think it's pretty fast, but it's actually slower than the original tempo. 
think the original tempo might be 210 or 220, I'm not sure. But I purposely recorded the backing track a little bit slower, but it's still pretty fast if you're new to the solo. Let's go to the next phrase. Uh, this is a, a genius move by Django, playing this little pattern. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, mm. four, one. Let's play it until the B flat on the next um, system, right there. So, I mean, this is technically not difficult. The most difficult thing is to count it correctly so that you're not being too early. The first bar starts on the one end. I was talking about that principle in my theory video. Just made a video discussing all theory I think you need it to be a professional jazz guitarist. And one of the things I was talking about is the difference between on the beat and one end or two ends. So this starts on the two ends. One, two, three, four, one, two. And then on the one end, three, four, uh, four, one. So the first phrase is on the two end and then the other phrases are on the one end. One, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three, four, one, four, one. Let's go on before we play it with the backing track. Now we have this B flat major arpeggio up. I wrote it down like this. I think that's the easiest way to play it, but Django is probably playing it like this. You have to make a big jump like that. Actually, Django kind of misses that note. It sounds almost like a B. It's almost like he's hitting a B. Just because it's a big risk, I decided to go for this easy... Easier solution. Of course, you have to jump from the B flat to the B flat. But there's rest in between this. So, and I'm, I'm used to playing a major arpeggio like that. With this, with this fingering. So the whole thing, uh, one, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, one, four, one. The only thing is it's very easy to rush, especially this thing. So try to hold back. From the beginning. Really great first course. So let's go to the second course. So the first lick of the second course sounds like this. One, two, three, four. So what is difficult about this? About this jump, make sure you hit the A. A double down stroke here. Be very aware of the fact, F, D, double down. And then this uh, harmonic. It's not really clear what he's doing on the recording. It sounds like a harmonic. Go listen to the original, by the way. There's a link to it in the description. This is a good phrase to practice your timing and play very clear quarter notes on the beat. Da ba da ki di du ba du da. And make the eighth note swing. Even those two. Don't play. Let's go on. It's not so difficult. Here we have a really nice phrase for E7. So, um, it's pretty easy to play. And this is a typical Django thing to play some, to put some quarter notes in there, but it almost sounds like he's playing consecutive eighth notes. But the quarter notes make it very comfortable to play. Then he hits this octave, and I have kind of the feeling that maybe it's by accident, but it sounds great. It's one of those iconic moments in the solo, so of course we're going to do that. And then quarter triplets. 
So the quarter triplets, I discussed those two in my video, uh, how to time them. So check it out if you don't know what quarter triplets are. But basically you wanna play six notes in that bar with equal length. Can swing. Tanga di 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 do. You want to make the swing in those eighth notes very consistent. Tanga di 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 dum. Tanga di 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 dum. Two. Make sure that you play that F in the first bar, the F in the second bar, and the G sharp in the third bar really on the beat. Don't don't start too early after that quarter note. Let's go on. Nice vibrato on that E there. And then we have again a phrase where he plays a major nine on uh, the E7. And I want a downstroke on that A to have the triplet again. Two guitar players that really mastered this technique of the double downstroke for the triplet are Birelli and Stockler Rosenberg. And it really gives an extra punch to their triplets because a lot of other players would just play like this, like a trill. It's not the same as, so you gotta learn that technique by focusing on the last downstroke. Uh, so this course is a lot easier than the first course, right? One, two, three, four. Play this chorus with a backing track. And then we get those two awesome choruses, uh, or one awesome chorus with all those chords, and then the last chorus is really tricky. And uh, I'll do that on Patreon. Let's play the whole complete solo that we have so far. It's gonna take a lot of practice to make it sound like Django. I transcribed it yesterday morning and I practiced all day to make it sound like it's sounding now. And, and of course it can still be improved. Uh, now I had to work the hardest on the last chorus actually, but uh, the first choruses can also be pretty tricky. So I invite you to practice it as well and uh, maybe check out my Patreon if you want to learn the rest. But I think those first two choruses alone are very good practice. If you like this video, please like the video. Maybe subscribe to my channel and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.